All right, settle down, everyone. Settle down. I know we've had a lot of fun this weekend, but it's time to get serious. As always, welcome to Konami Expo 2017. Uh, you've heard a lot already about how speed duels will become the next TCG, how Firewall Dragon will cause absolutely no problems whatsoever. Uh, but now it's time to talk about Vrains, our flagship series for the next couple of years. Now, as you know, we're still in the pre-production stages, uh, but I'll just give you a little bit of a heads up about what it's going to be about. Vrains is a show that will explore the deep connections between humans and AI. It'll determine what a future for humanity alongside technological companions will look like, and how do I breach this topic? Um, there is an AI character in the show. Sir, if I may, are you talking about fuckability? Yup, I think some of you are starting to catch on. As soon as any company introduces any AI for any reason, people online uh, will try to fuck it. So right here I've got a diagram. You can see we've got the Samsung AI. Uh, there, uh, you, you just can't use the internet and search this character. We've got Cortana. So number one priority for Vrains is gonna be we need to make our AI character unfuckable. We could make them like a dog or like a toddler. Oh, sir, I've actually already labbed up a design. As you can see here, he's just a little guy, stands about two or three inches tall, connected to a dual disc at all times. I understand that his head looks just a little bit like a butt plug, and that's maybe a risky choice given our clientele, but it's also where his face is, so you wouldn't be able to use him for that purpose without suffocating him. Oh, thank you so much, Johnson. You're a lifesaver. He, he looks perfect. Truly something that you could not, under any circumstances, fuck. Now, we're all gonna remember this by the third season, right? Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts! I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. Ah, Adagnister. This archetype's been so bad for so long that the last time I took a look at it, I called it Ignister. What can I say, I didn't think Konami would release an archetype that gets you banned from Discord. From unplayable garbage on release, to inconsistent boss after arrival, I am happy to announce, Adagnister is finally approaching playable. Roll the clip. So here's the list, which I have shamelessly stolen from Om Lettuce. That means if you've got an issue with the deck building, take it up with them, not me. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. It's got a deck builder, card database, pack opener, and a wealth of strategy articles. It's also where I post the Chalice Lime monthly deck breakdowns, so give it a look at www.ygopro. D-E-C-K dot com. So with that, let's... Fuck. How am I supposed to alliterate with an at symbol? Oh, uh, whatever. Here's Adagnister. So Adagnister is an archetype played by I in the third season of the Vrains anime. Now, the third season was plagued by a ton of issues, including the need for a quick wrap-up, production delays, they ran out of money, I think. Everyone working on the project suffered collective amnesia about the storylines that they started in the first season. Uh, so mostly season three is a bunch of scenes like this. Ugh, not super promising as a starting point for a deck, but one of the few bright spots in this season is the character design for I and Robapi, who are the antagonists of the third arc. I plays a deck meant to evoke feelings of his fallen AI comrades, who were either mercilessly killed by Soul or mercifully killed by Revolver, who did nothing wrong. Each attribute also has a little blobby dork which enables an extra deck monster of all the major summoning types. There's also a couple of stragglers like Gacha and Denmari, but that's pretty much the gist of it. So if you're still with me, you have probably sussed out the general issue among these monsters. First, because each little blob facilitates a different end boss, board building with these blunguses is a catastrophe. Second, this problem is exacerbated by the fact that Dark Templar Adagnister needs to destroy an opponent's monster by battle in order to get the ball rolling on combos. It's pretty neat that in the 10 million simulations I ran before turning evil, he never encountered a monster with 2400 attack. 
And thirdly, as an added affront to the memory of Eyes Fallen Friends, this deck requires heavy use of the Field Spell, which allows you to special summon each individual attribute of monster onto a board with nothing in the main monster zone once per turn. Okay, so we've diagnosed the issues, bosses that conflict, Dark Templar's awful battle phase effect, and reliance on the Field Spell. I am happy to report that 300 years after first releasing the archetype, Konami has given us two cards that actually accomplish something. First, there's an end boss. The arrival Cybers at Ignister is a, a big, big boy. And secondly, a card that reads like a custom, Dark Infant at Ignister. This card on summon searches the field spell and on activation of another Cybers monster's effect moves to the left and changes its attribute. This is so it can proc the effect of Dark Templar at Ignister on the first turn. After the release of these cards, and the consistency boosting when I first met you, the deck has become a machine at pumping out a 6 material arrival and backing it up with protection in the graveyard. So with that, let's get into the card by card. We'll start with our Adagnisters. First up is Piari. This is the light Adagnister and on summon adds an eye spell trap from your deck to your hand. This used to be the only way to reliably get the field spell into your grip, but now that we have Dark Infant, you can use it to add when I first met you or Idle Reborn, either of which are fantastic for extension. Next up is Doyon Adagnister. This is a little innocuous. On normal or special summon, this card allows you to target an Adagnister in your graveyard and put it back in your grip. And if it's sent to the graveyard for the material of a a Link Summoned Cybers monster, you can add an Eye Spell Trap back to your hand. That's very important for repeatability of your plays, but its first effect is important because you are usually spending your normal on a Chi Chi, which you can then special because Ignister Island hasn't special to fire this turn. A Chi Chi at Ignister is the Stratos of the archetype, for want of a better word. On summon, it adds a level 4 or lower at Ignister from your deck to your hand, except for itself, and oftentimes you are adding one of the two priors. We've got two copies of Hiyari at Ignister. This facilitates the Ritual at Ignister monster, which we are clearly not playing, uh, but it's also the only level 4 or lower at Ignister that's a free special from the hand, and that's necessary to facilitate really powerful 6 material arrival Cybers at Ignister plays, which is otherwise not possible. Very, very important that you're able to do that because otherwise your opponent could get over it with something like a 5300 attack point access code. Next up, we've got a copy of Baruru at Ignister. This is integral to your combos, uh, performs synchro summons, extends, but is also very searchable off of cards like Cyber's Wicked, which is why we're only playing the one. Gachiri is a free special summon as well, but has a ton of stars and therefore can't be searched by Achichi. It is still very strong and it's also a premier defensive play, uh, but, you know, not good enough to play more than a copy of. After that, we've got Danmari at Ignister. This is the card you will be sending from your deck to Graveyard by using Baruru's effect. You can banish this from your Graveyard if you've got your arrival Cybers at Ignister on your side of the field to negate a face-up card your opponent controls. Since it's a quick effect, this functions like something like a Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. It's a really, really powerful omni-negation tool. Next, we've got three Droll and Lockbird. These are just our staple hand traps, three Ash Blossom, three Gamma, and a Driver. These can be edited, certainly, uh, for more targeted hand traps like Nibiru or Extension like Parallel Exceed if the deck goes in that direction. For spells, we've got three When I First Met You. This card is unbelievable. You can reveal a Cybers monster with 2300 attack in your hand or extra deck, then add an Adagnister with the same attribute from your deck to your hand. Now, you're usually taking damage at the end of the turn because if you didn't special summon a monster as the uh, same name as the one you revealed, you're going to get hit, and you don't usually go into Fire Phoenix as part of your combos. We've got three Synat Mining, just unbelievable that Cybers has a searcher this strong. Three Idle Reborn, it's a quick play reborn for Adagnister monsters, not much more to say. Three Ignister Island, a Called by the Grave, and three Forbidden Droplet. Space in the extra deck is extremely tight. Cybers Quantum Dragon is very important for Baruru setups where you're not able to make a six material access. We've got Win Pegasus at Ignister, which is sort of interaction. If your rival Cybers at Ignister is sent to the graveyard, then you can use this to pop a card on your opponent's side of the field. Uh, Light Dragon is in here because you need to be able to find the copy of Piari off of and when I first met you, but it's still a very powerful removal tool. It is non-targeting destruction. We've got a rival Cybers at Ignister, of course, an access code talker, really good if you're going second. Fire Phoenix, same reason as Light Dragon, you need it when I first met you. We've got Transcode Talker. We've got Dark Templar. We've got Elephase. This is important for a couple of combos, uh, but not necessarily integral. We've got Splash Mage. We've got Cybers Wicked. A copy of Link Spider 
one guess as to what this is in here for. Two Dark Infant Adagnister and a Lingaribo. Lingaribo could be a third copy of Dark Infant, but it's kind of important for you to have something to get Cybers monsters out of your main monster zone, and sometimes you want it to also interact with your opponent. So, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Harpy. I've been seeing a lot of Harpy recently on Edo Pro Ladder. Is it crossover from Duel Links or something? Well, you fool. I have trained against Harpy for a thousand years on the Platinum Ladder. You cannot possibly defeat me. This game just showcases the bread and butter combo. We're going to begin with a copy of Piari. We're going to use Piari to get a copy of When I First Met You. We'll then link off for a Dark Infant at Ignister, which will add a copy of Ignister Island from deck to hand. We're going to use Island to summon a copy of Doyon, then trigger Doyon to bring back the Picari. We haven't summoned a Light yet, so we can, after making Wicked, do that, putting the Picari at link points. So we can activate Wicked to get a copy of Baruru. Next, we'll go for a Splash Mage, and then Special Summon the Baruru, activate its effect to send a copy of Hiari. We would usually send Denmari here, but we already have it in grip. We'll go for When I First Met You to get a Fire, that's Fire Phoenix revealed so we can go into Wind Pegasus at Ignister, trigger the Graveyard Effect of Baruru, bringing back Doyon, and make Dark Templar with three materials. We'll trigger Doyon as well so we have it when I first met you for next turn, then special summon the Achichi, trigger the effect of Achichi for a copy of Hiari, go into a Dark Templar at Ignister activation off of a Dark Infant summon, and then trigger the effect of Dark Infant to go into Divine, summon this copy of Hiari, and there you have it, a six material arrival Cybers at Ignister. We take 23 because we didn't summon the Fire at Ignister from our extra. Our opponent's going to go into a Hysteric Sign, we'll Droll and Lockbird them here, they'll set one card and pass it back to us. Fantastic news. We're going to begin with a copy of Arrival Cyber Static Nister. They'll flip Trap Trick, and I'm pretty sure that Waking the Dragon is a lot better when I don't know it's coming. We'll go for a Picari and then trigger the effect of Picari for a copy of Idle Reborn before making a Linger Rebo. Seeing the trap negation on field, our opponent shuts down. So it's time for game two. <gasps> oh my god. Is that tier zero meta defining threat flundries? My opponent's gonna normal summon 15 times in one turn. They're gonna floodgate me out of the game. I've seen so many videos from so many Yugi tubers telling me that this is going to finally end Yu-Gi-Oh forever. They're even going first. They'll activate a pot of duality and fight off the top of their deck. The best starter in the entire deck. They're gonna normal summon a copy of Rabina and this deck sucks, folks. It dies to one interaction. We're going to begin with a copy of Sign at Mining. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a copy of Achichi. We'll trigger the effect of Achichi. We'll get a copy of Picari to hand. We'll go into a Dark Infant at Ignister. We're trying to proc that set card, and Ignister Island is a really sick hit. They go for the Punishment, which is... Fine, we have a second copy of Island, but even popping it here with Entis isn't fantastic because it does recur itself. It just maybe screws up some of our graveyard combos. We have the When I First Met You, so we'll go for the Island as well. We'll go into a Lingaribo. See, it's already coming in handy. We'll special summon this copy of Doyon and put this Achichi back in hand. Remember, it hasn't been summoned yet via the effect of Ignister Island. We'll go into Wicked and then summon the Achichi. Trigger the effect of Wicked. We'll use Wicked to get a copy of Baruru before making Splash Mage. We'll trigger Island to bring out the Baruru, then activate Baruru's effect to send a copy of Dan Mari. We'll go ahead and activate the effect of Splash Mage for a Doyon. Doyon, and now we can trigger Baruru in order to bring back the Doyon and make a Dark Templar. We'll Idle Reborn. Thankfully, we do have the one piece of extension necessary to play through this. We'll go into Dark Infant and into Dark Templar. That's going to get everything back from the graveyard, and though we can't make a six material monster here, we can make an access code. We are on the draw. We'll go for the access code, destroy our opponent's last remaining monster, and get in for lethal. So it's time for game three, and you know what that means. A best of three versus meta. Our opponent's on Tri-Brigade Zodiac, and I really do like these games. They show off a lot of important things about the deck. We're going Going first, we're going to begin with a copy of Sign at Mining. We'll get an Achichi to hand. We're going to normal summon a copy of Achichi and then activate its effect for Doyon. Because we've opened Hiari, we already have the entire line. We'll go for Ignister Island. We'll special summon a copy of, you guessed it, Picari from hand. We'll trigger the effect of Picari for when I first met you before going into a Wicked and then using Island to special summon the Doyon. We'll trigger Doyon to get the Achichi back, then activate the effect of Cyber's Wicked to get a Baruru to hand before going into a Splash Mage as well. We'll special summon the Baruru and then we will send a copy of Doyon. I, I kind of screw this up here. Uh, we're going to go for a Doyon into a Wind Pegasus adding Nister, then use Baruru to bring back the Doyon that when I first met you in order to get Denmari. I'm, I'm sorry, I uh, that should have been the send-off Baruru, but I am not very smart. We're going to special summon this copy of Achichi, go into Dark Infant, we're just doing the combo from here. Dark Infant to move over, calling Divine. We'll special summon three monsters from Graveyard, the Hiari from Hand, and that's six material necessary for a big boy arrival Cybers adding Nister. So, does Zodiac play an out to this card? The short answer is no. The long answer is... Maybe. We droll them after their first add-off of Tanky. It ends up really not mattering. They're going to go for a Chocanine here to special summon. I guess they could theoretically make the big boy Xyz, but I, I don't think it would actually accomplish anything. They're going to bring back this copy of Chocanine and then make Tiger Mortar. They'll trigger Tiger Mortar's effect to set something back on the Chocanine, the Dryden tier. Then they're going to special summon back the Dryden. 
and then just use them as material for Tri Brigade Flagette. They'll special summon the kit and then activate its effect for four. They're going to go for Shrike. They'll trigger Shrike to get rid of the island. And then they're going to go for a four mat made access code talker. This is 63, but it turns out adding Dan Mari to the hand was right here because it can negate the effect. Now, my opponent is just banishing stuff from graveyard to blow up my board. Uh, we'll blow up their board in response with a Wind Pegasus adding Nister in the graveyard, and I'm feeling fantastic about this. Unfortunately, Wind Pegasus adding Nister puts it back in the extra. So from here on out, we are going to have to contend with our opponent's four material copy of access code. We'll attack in for 6,000, and that's really the only thing I'm fearing. They're going to go for a revolt at end step. They'll draw for turn. This is probably a mistake. I let the revolt resolve. I figure the only possible thing I need to be negating with the Danmari in the graveyard is the access code. If I can keep it under 6300, I'll be fine. They're going to go for the Shrike, then they're going to activate Tanky. They'll use Tanky in order to get anything they want. They'll Fractar for two here. They're going to get double Dragon Lords, then use Saros's effect to special summon it from hand, then activate its effect for three in order to go into Havalskgar. That's going to be able to banish the Danmari before they make the access code talker, which is now going to be at 6300 that said they're not out of the woods yet if i get some really powerful monster off the top that can just trade with this double dragon lords i might be in the clear but that's not gonna be enough we'll go for picari they have the ash blossom and i guess we're going to game two so honestly, a really interesting game one that showcases what meta decks are packing in order to out your turn one board, followed by an unplayably bad game two. Come on! We have so many adding Nisters in our deck, and almost all of them are full combo. I, I guess we're just going to set two. It's going to have to be good enough. Our opponent's grip is fine. They draw a copy of Tanky off the top, but we do have a ton of hand traps, and one of the upsides to having so many hand traps is you might actually get to interact. Our opponent goes for the Rat Pier. We don't Gamma this, but don't let a missed Gamma turn you into missing Gamma for the whole turn. You can feel free to activate it at a slightly less inopportune moment a second later. They go for an Ash in response to the Gamma. Gamma's not once per turn, so we could have just let this resolve, but I figure we probably don't want to, uh, just because that's the most impactful it's ever going to be when our opponent doesn't know that it's happening. We're going to go for a Doyon here, which we rip off the top, but unfortunately, this is one of the very few Adagnisters that does not get the line rolling. Our opponent's going to activate Pot of Desires, draw a couple of cards, one of which is a Revolt. Because of that, they're going to go from Nerval into Fractal, Fractal into Sending to the Graveyard for a Kit, and then Kit to send a Saros. That's a lot of material. They'll set two and pass back to us. That's a sick rip, but now Ash Blossom is back online from the Called by the Grave, and we are forced, unfortunately, to pass. They're going to activate IDP. We'll negate the IDP. This is just to bait out the Lingaribo, so they can, of course, resolve Revolt. They'll go for Revolt for four here. They're going to go into a Shrike, then activate the Effect of Shrike and the Effect of Nerval. We're going to drop. They're going to order, and that is uh, that is the end of the game. I, I can't think of anything I could draw that would turn this on. They're going to take seven and just uh, hop, skip, and a jump to lethal here. They'll go for a Fractal in order to go into a false reg, they'll go into Shrike, they'll go into access code, not wasting any time, even playing around Nibiru with a zero card hand. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. So, we're back with the deck, and... huh. This deck's been topping, but I honestly don't think it's going to last. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, the deck's consistent. You've got about a million ways to find your plays, and with the exception of the last match, we did it every game. Two, it's great going second. The turn one play has some downsides, but the removal options this deck has access to are absolutely stunning. And three, God, I is so hot. He's so fucking hot. And the cons. One, so if this deck is ever a meta-relevant pick in any capacity, it is laughably easy to hate out. One kaiju and you are completely fucking boned. Two, so if this deck is ever a meta-relevant pick in any capacity, it is laughably easy to hate out. One kaiju and you're completely fucking boned. And three, if this deck is ever a meta-relevant pick in any capacity, it is laughably easy to hate out. One kaiju and you are completely fucking boned. All in all, the deck is decent, but it's one note, it's play is telegraphed, and boy oh boy is it gonna lose to kaijus. So that's that. As always, thanks to my patrons, Ooh, we had to bust out the fourth column here. All right. Dominic Ernst, Hakuo, AJBYGO, Alex Perea, BB Poison, Blue Fan Fiction Inc., Brandon Green, Chibi Gohan, Connor Kid, Dim Sum 05, Dubs Rewatcher, Frosty, Jack Sack PhD, King Magic Ruler, Night Mary, Kylie Denton, Major Rusty, Matt, Mike Carlotti, Rocky Hernandez, Rose Lapine, Sarah Rutledge, Sean Alling Jr., Space Condor, Space Dandy 1993. 
Adam Trevino, Adrian Bra, Afro Ninja123, Alex Dominguez, Alfred Hendricks, Amaranta V, Andrew Benson, Andrew Ferruia, Andrew Horseman, Apex TCG, Ballin Stalin, based Madoka, Billy Williams, Plack Anchor. <laughs> Blake Root, Bleh, Brandon Keys, Breaker the Outrage, Candide, Captain Breadbeard, Chad Bortz, Chad Weatherington, Chase Smith, Chorps Away, CJ Alex, Cole Shulian, Colin Gustafson, Control for the Win, Crystal Redbox, Daffy Deathclock, Dan the Manhoven, Danny Guadalupe, Darcy Tevs, Dive Missile, Dogma, Doug Parslow, Dr. Batman, Dying Eyes, Dylan Charles Appleton, Distrin, Eileen Sappho, Emperor Stove, Ernesto Ibarra, Fighting Fang Wong, Fisker Whiskers, FUTR, Game of Wolf, Gavin K, Hank Cheesecake, Heliasa Helias, Haroof, How to Lose, Jose Mina, Incredibly Slow, Isaac Jackson, Jane Lanya, Jason Leonard, Jay Gordon, Jeff Leonard, Jesse Cox, Jonathan Wallace, Joop, Jose Louis Cortez, Joy or John, Julia Chulian, Cali, Corey Hess, Kurokaze, Lake Bayer, Lawrence, Leah Lisblitz, Lottie, Lover Plesse, Lucas Angles, Lucas Geardis, Lucas Arizo Hansen, Major Duncan, Matthew Taylor, Max, Meadow Edits, Mezzo Emers, Michael Oskvarek, Michael Smith, Miles Edgelord, Mimes Are Creepy, Miska Aronin, Miyuna Arashi, Nick Extreme 99, Nero Soup, Nitro Skull, Nix Dolores, Noom, No Penguin, Omase, One Glad Morning, Austrin, Papa Dragonite, Part 2, Picnic Blast It, Please Don't Ban Elpy. No. Precise Bike 13, Pro FP2, Riley Malo, Sam Pinney, Sapphic Ashley, Scrafted, Sean Deal, Sean Flynn, Sendoria, Seraphine, Shy, Standards Objective, Swinkles, Tate Rosencutter, The Carl Moxley, The Saucy Pickle, This Machine 237, Thought Auditor, Why Am I Here, Yordle He Who, Yuri's Best, and Yukie. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing. And if you want to be part of the process, consider following me on Twitch as well. See you next time.